Of course, for this session, I will be turning over the floor again to Mr. Chuck Gomez to facilitate the Q&A. All right, so Chuck, here you go. Ito na, I'll give you my microphone and you can start the Q&A. Salamat sa, hi Kaira. Welcome to the family. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. We're opening the floor um, for questions. Request ko lang, no personal questions kay Ms. Moira, ha? Okay, yan ang request ko. I'm not allowing her to answer personal questions. Gusto niya, pero ako may ayaw. Diba? Nag-uusap kami kanina. So anyway, the first question is from the lifestyle section of the Daily Tribune. Si Jocelyn Valle has a question for Ma'am Olive. Jo? Uh, Ms. Olive, uh, kasi kanina Chok mentioned na this is ano, low sugar and low carbs. Yes. Is that, ano, can you please explain? Oh, uh, Aaron, can you please explain the low sugar? I'll ask Aaron to explain it. Just get the mic, Aaron. Low sugar, low sugar. Less, less sugar. Hello, hi. Uh, yeah, so um, the way we make Marilara Virgin um, is actually uh, we try to retain as much of the flavor that we have in Marilara Sangria. Uh, but of course, uh, we use a combination of, um, of uh, natural sugars and um, some, some proprietary blends that um, allow us to um, keep the sugar at a lower level than what you would usually have in our normal variant of Maria Clara Sangria. So um, I, I, I hope that answers the question. But um, we, we really try to keep it as a health drink. Well, not a health drink, but a healthier alternative. Uh, it be 0% uh, alcohol and uh, be lower in sugar content. Yes. Yeah, I think the sugar content is in the label, no? It's seven, the label. seven grams, I think. Yeah, yeah. there's nutrition facts in the label. Yeah. I think seven grams and zero parts. Uh, seven grams of, of sugar, yes. Per serving. Per serving. And zero carbs, I think. This is good for keto. Um, since there's still uh, actual sugars in it, I wouldn't recommend for keto. But again, I'm not a dietitian, then. <laughs> but I have a main barrier. Because um, actually, the purpose of the wine is really to, um, um, to. There's some tenderizing uh, effects, and there's also some. some um, and really when you cook with wine um, it, or, or, uh, or, or any alcoholic beverage for that matter, you, you really get rid also of all that. Hello? Yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. And uh, which one uh, did you like? Yung hindi po. Yung hindi virgin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. Thank but you so much. But the good. For when I don't. Thank you, thank you, Moira. You pass the mic. And then after Manila, Gemma Villanueva of uh, Orange Magazine, I think, has a question. Keep the microphone. Thank you. No personal questions for Moira, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, for Moira, but for Moira. Uh... Um, well, if I can be completely honest, uh, I had to think about it very well because it's an alcoholic brand um, and I, I really wanted to be careful with my endorsements and and then they presented the campaign to me and I do drink sangria, I do drink Maria Clara um, and I come from Anonapo that's where I grew up in. And I remember um, for New Year's, my, my mom would actually, my, my family, my titas would bring in Maria Clara as well. And so these are things that I'm not, um, I'm not foreign to. So that was one thing off of my, my checklist. Another thing was, um, I wanted to make sure that this was actually a brand that I can represent. And so when I, looked at the campaign, it, they, were, they were looking for somebody who can represent um, Maria Clara, not just being, you know, um, 
a brand that's been there for many years, but a brand that's been a friend for many years. And I believe that my music has been a friend. I don't really identify my music as, you know, I, I, I've never really been, I've never really fit any stereotype. So I can never claim recognition when people give me recognition because I, I don't, I don't think I deserve it. Um, in that sense, I know I work really hard. But at the same time, I know that so many other people are working twice, five times as hard as me. And, and so I say that acknowledging and I'm proud of myself as well. But, but at the same time, I identify my music as not really as something I can boast, but boast about, but something that I can be a friend to people with, do, said. Um, and, and so when Maria Clara presented the campaign to me, I loved it so much already. And I really looked through it and, and then I said yes. And so, yeah. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, this is my band. And they've been my best friends for the last eight years. Pagkatapos ko po i-shoot yun, malasing na po ako. <laughs> Hindi pa po, po nalabas yung virgin nun eh. So, yun po. Yeah, hi. Hi, my love. other songs for Maria Clara, but I, I kept scratching them because it didn't, I, I, I actually sang for commercial jingles when I first started my career and it actually, it actually, um, My first few years in the industry, I was actually singing for commercial jingles. And so I kind of have an idea how brands want their commercial jingles to sound like. And when Maria Clara approached me, I thought in my head that that was how they had originally wanted the jingle to sound like. But then in the end, when I look back at the campaign brief, it was very far from the jingles that I had made. And so I made something that I thought would be nice to listen to whenever you have a Maria Clara glass at hand. And trying to unwind and seeing Maria Clara as that constant companion and trying to forget things or trying to escape things or trying to just rest your mind from thinking about things that you don't want to think about for a moment. Um, I wanted to accompany that with music that will ease your mind for even just a little bit and remind you that you are not alone in this and things are going to be all right. And so that was kind of like the process of how Maria Clara was written. Um, or after? Hindi po. 
ilabas ko po sa nanay ko, ganito na po talaga ko. Pati pag hindi ako po ata, ganito na rin. So, pasensya na po. Bahay ang nanay ko po, uminom ng Maria po talaga kayo pag labas ko, ganito na. Three glasses po. Um, before I take, I get a hit. But it depends. It depends when I'm sad. Why? Wait, what kind of uh, social drinker are you? I don't know. To find social drinker. Well, I mean, in our industry, we always have to be social. Mm -hmm. I am an introvert, but I had to learn to be social. And I had to. I, I, I'm an introvert and I have ADHD. And so <laughs> I had to learn how to be social and to be around people. Um, so I I have learned to, to kind of drink socially. Um, so when I'm out, I kind of know how to control my drinking. But when I am with when I am around people I'm safe with, I do allow myself to get a little drunk. <laughs> well, you deserve more than that. Uh, ano hirap mo magtrabaho, di ba? At kumayod at magperform. Pero let's talk about yun nga, yun nas, yung drinking and your your ADHD. How do you how do you balance that? How do you handle that? Uh, especially of course, no, it can kick in. Yes. Everything in moderation again. Um, I don't I don't believe in you know depriving yourself. I think I um I think what somebody asked something about keto, I actually did all the diets before and nothing really worked um, until, until I just, um, I, last year I just decided to just take it easy and to just take things one step at a time and then the weight just came off naturally. Um, with the help of my hormone doctor and and so like um, everything just happened effortlessly but I wasn't really focusing on my weight it was more my mental well-being and I wasn't depriving myself of any food of Maria and Lara I wasn't depriving myself of anything I was just taking everything in moderation I was taking my time taking it one day at a time and everything just Really happened, and so I think um, it's knowing how to acknowledge my weaknesses as well as my strengths, and acknowledging um, what was good for me and what was bad, and knowing what to walk away from. And so, um, and so yeah, I think that's how I kind of like took care of myself. Well, you look. It doesn't end with the fact that we saw the northern light. And it was also in Winnipeg that we made history being the first Filipino to ever perform at the Canada Life Center. And as sharing with the audience there, because that was one of our favorite performances ever, um, that a lot of times we have all these questions and we have all these plans, but we are always told, oh, just one step at a time, just one day at a time. But what happens when you don't know what happens tomorrow? What happens when you don't see the next step? And that's when I realized that as long as I know God is in me, I'm good. Because it didn't really matter that I didn't know what to expect in Winnipeg because it exceeded my expectation anyway. And so that's when I wondered, I wonder what would happen if I stopped boxing God in my set of expectations and I just trusted him anyway. Yeah, I'll plan. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll dream, I'll have faith. But I wonder what will happen if I still entrusted everything to him anyway, because he's gonna exceed my expectations anyway because of all the cities that was the best one and that was the one i didn't plan for 
And so that city changed my life and my perspective that, yeah, I may not know what happens next, but if God is with me, I know it's going to be okay and everything's going to be all right. That's good. Virgin family, yeah. So, napaisip ka ba na uh, uh, paano mag-ganap like sa akin yung Maria Clara? Or, uh, at this age, uh, would you say that there's still this Maria Clara in Moira? And paano yun? I'm sorry, I don't know. Nung inopoy sa'yo to, di ba, pangalan ng drink, sis Maria Clara, Virgin family, yeah. So, nung napaisip ka ba na um, uh, why me? Uh, see, we all know what is Mar uh, who, uh, what represent Maria Clara, diba? So, ikaw ba at this age, would you would you say na you still have that that Maria Clara character? I think so. Yes. No, I know so because I think the modern Filipina should not fit this the stereotype anymore. Thank you. Okay.